Hello again, everybody. In my continuation of giving you information on COVID-19 that no one else is giving you, or that you might not hear other places, today I'll be coming back to the carnivore community and asking them this question. Where do you get your vitamin P? I'll be discussing vitamin P's possible role in combating the coronavirus. Some of you younger folks may never have heard of vitamin P. Well, I realized that when I looked up vitamin P to refresh my memory and to possibly learn something new. Yeah, I did. What I learned is, medicinenet.com says, vitamin P is an old name for substances now known as bioflavonoids. Old name. That shows you how long ago I learned this stuff. I've often said in my videos, you know, I'm way past all this nutrition stuff. That's why I don't do many videos teaching this basic stuff. I learned it so long ago. So that's why some of you may have not heard of vitamin P. You might have thought I was joking. Well, like I've said recently, I may often be joking, but I'm never kidding. My videos are almost always rooted in something real that I'm trying to teach. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that vitamin P could cure you of COVID-19. And I'm not even saying it's a reliable prevention against the virus. Matter of fact, I cannot say that for legal reasons. So, what exactly are these bioflavonoids? Well, they are the parts of plants that give the plants their color, such as the redness in watermelon, the orange in carrots. And these flavonoids protect the plants from attacks from insects and microbes. They are linked with cardiovascular disease prevention. Now that word linked there, you gotta be careful, because that, that means they don't know exactly what the cause and effect are. But people who eat more flavonoids have less cardiovascular disease, which is a risk factor for dying from the coronavirus. And more recently, here you can see a study published four years ago, effect of flavonoids on upper respiratory tract infections and immune function. Now COVID attacks the lower respiratory tract and there simply isn't enough data done on that to know. But it is likely that it has a positive effect on the lungs. And also, vitamin P works with vitamin C, which we know is one of the top immune system vitamins. And they're often found together in foods. One of the main foods to get your vitamin P is oranges. It's especially found in the white part called the pith. And as is well known, oranges have a very large amount of vitamin C. And there's a lot of people out there that eat so much meat, they often don't get around to eating these colorful fruits and vegetables. Now, I'm different. I have made sure throughout any of my dietary changes to continue eating those foods. And I urge all of my carnivore buddies to do the same. Your diet is important. This fuels the immune system. It's all about the immune system. If you give your body enough, an abundance of the vitamins and minerals that your immune system needs, it'll function properly. And if you clean out a lot of crap from your body by doing things like eating fruit for breakfast and nothing else, especially oranges, fasting. Yeah, I've been, I've been doing intermittent fasting, partly because I don't want to be eating so much meat. So you want to be eating real food, not processed stuff. Raw food, you want to, you want to get plenty of raw food. And I found on the CDC website, can COVID-19 coronavirus be passed on through food? And here's what they had to say. Experience with SARS suggests that people are not infected with the virus through food. And don't you think that's kind of strange? Because they tell you to clean surfaces in your hands. Food has a surface, and you put it into your mouth. Besides catching the virus directly from another person, another way people contract COVID-19 is indirectly touching surfaces that an infected person has coughed or sneezed on. How about food? So I ended up just doing a search on raw food. I found the Food Safety Authority of Ireland. They say it is possible that infected food workers could introduce the virus to the food they are working on by coughing or sneezing or through hand contact unless they strictly follow good personal hygiene practices. Now you know why you really need to avoid restaurants. And the, the hygiene practices are not as good as they should be. And some general tips on protecting your immune system, making it strong enough. This has worked for me for so many years of eating the way I do. I just rarely catch things, even being around thousands of people in big crowds. 
and that is eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. I'm talking meals of just fruit, packing it in. Major vitamin C, you know, uncooked vitamin B, lots of minerals. Other tips include sleeping well, and that involves sleeping early, because when you go to bed early, you're going to sleep much better and longer. Keeping the stress low and exercising it keeps your system working well, but you don't want to over-exercise either. Your immune system drops for maybe hours afterwards. Okay, I think I've covered it. Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up and share it. For more of my unique insight that can improve your life, check out this video that a lot of people missed. Maybe because it's about news, but it was a pretty good video. It's not very long, and all of my videos, no matter what the topic is, I always offer my wise, high-level way of thinking that conditions you to think the same way. And my low view count just goes to show you that living smart is something that almost nobody does. <laughs> no, because nobody's here. Hardly anyone cares to listen. It's, it's crazy to me that people don't want to live a good life in minimal effort here. It, it doesn't make any sense. That video shows the weaknesses of our media and our government. It's really entertaining, too, the way I did it. So once you've gotten home from shopping, just self-quarantine yourself and sit down and watch that video. Have a good laugh. It'll de-stress you while teaching you, conditioning you to not just trust anything.